recently I was on Facebook and I saw someone that wanted to trade a Contax G2 for a Leica M6. I have the Contax G2 and I've been shooting it with it for the last couple months. And I love this camera. I'm gonna do a full review on this camera. There's just a couple things that don't work for me with this camera. And it's not the camera's fault, it's just my shooting style. And so I've been actually looking at a Leica M6 as kind of an alternative to what I'm looking for. And so when someone was looking to trade this setup for a Leica M6, I was like, yeah, I'm interested. So I started messaging back and forth with them. They were into it and they wanted to do the trade, which the Leica M6 is going for more than this is going for, but I have the full kit, so I thought it was pretty close to a fair trade. As we started exchanging like where I should ship it to, I started researching the person and they had a Twitter profile, they had a Facebook profile, Instagram profile, LinkedIn. They seemed like a legit person. Like I did some Google stalking and looked in and they look like a real person. And so I felt comfortable, still a little sketchy. I was, I was um, DMing Benj Heish actually asking him how he would go about doing a trade like that to make it fair. And he, he suggested that you actually exchange money. So each of you guys buy the camera off each other and that way you have just kind of that safety net. And I thought that was a pretty good idea, like especially if you don't know the person. So then when I asked for the shipping address, they gave me this really weird address and I ended up Googling that and it was a scammer. Like everyone was like, don't trust this person, scammer, blah, blah, blah. That was a bummer. I shared that on my Instagram and immediately one of my buddies, Simon, who I follow on Instagram, he was like, oh, I've got a Leica you can try. I'll just send it to you, you can borrow it. We're in these like quarantine times where we're just like stuck inside doing nothing. He's like, yeah, I'm not even using it. You can just borrow it. I'm like, who does that? Like I've never even met Simon in person and just for him to openly just offer to borrow me a super expensive, amazing camera. I was like, okay, cool. Do you want my X-Pan? We ended up just boxing up our cameras and shipping them across the entire United States. A couple days later, we both had each other's cameras. And so we've just been enjoying shooting these past few days, um, actually a couple weeks with these cameras. I'll tell you about my experience with the Leica. I just, I've loved it. This is the first time I've actually even touched a Leica. So it's just been amazing. And yeah, I've got some footage from Simon. I'll show some of his photos and my photos, so enjoy. Hey guys, what's up? This is Simon. Uh, I'm coming to you from Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. First, I have to apologize for my appearance. This is day 12 of our county, which is Montgomery County, being shut down. With the exception of once or twice leaving the house, I really haven't. Um, but today was a day where I needed to go food shopping. And I've been wanting to document this whole COVID-19 situation, uh, the county being shut down, things like that. And I was fortunate enough uh, that Tony sent me this lovely piece, the Hasselblad X-Pan. And I think it's gonna be a really neat and interesting tool to sort of document the feel of this whole sort of situation where I think a place that I have noticed it the most has been shops, grocery stores, uh, just day-to-day -day life. Um, and I'm really interested to shoot this and see sort of what I can capture with this awesome panoramic format. Today I'm shooting Ilford uh, 3200 speed film and I've rated it at, uh, what did I rate this at? Thousand. Get some detail out of the shadows. Um, and I'm also gonna be shooting this probably F5.6, F4, hopefully keep the shutter speed high to uh, freeze as much motion as I can. So I'm sure we're gonna have some awkward looks in the grocery store shooting this thing, but let's do it. So I realized it's really hard to zone focus this camera at F4 and hold the phone and record and try to be inconspicuous around people who probably don't want their picture taken right now, but we're gonna make it happen anyway. So I'm just kind of waiting at this other right now. This is, sort of gives you the idea of what's going on right now. I think with this camera, I'm trying to sort of look for symmetry um, and try to keeping my line straight, sort of a cinematic approach more so than what I normally do with 35 or 120 film. Um, which grocery store aisles lend themselves well to. I just haven't found anything that is really interesting to me. Interesting to me yet, but 
you know, keep walking around, get weird looks from people. Alright, I got one portrait, so that's good. So I just got done in the grocery store, picked up some groceries for myself. Some initial thoughts when shooting with this guy. First, I think the biggest thing for me was trying to hold the camera, or sorry, hold the phone and shoot and focus with the camera at the same time, because I forgot my little cool hot shoe mount that I can put the phone up to. But I think other than that, one of the biggest things for me is that getting used to the focal length with this panoramic aspect ratio, <laughs> I'm very used, I shoot 35 millimeter lenses on pretty much every camera I have, and I'm very used to that focus, focal length, and I know when I bring it up to my eye, I know what that's gonna look like. And with this one, you'll see in some of those videos, I bring the camera up and I end up moving much closer to what I, because I think that it's going to be a, a more cropped in view. What else? The, I think the, the focusing on this is really, really, really smooth. Um, it's just as smooth as the, uh, the 35, Sumalux that I have on the MP. The shutter sound is a little, uh, well, it's a lot louder than the MP. And then I think a lot of that's due to the auto wind because it's winding so far into the canister because of how many frames it's using across the 35 millimeter film. But it's not obnoxiously loud. Um, it's on par, I think, around with my Contax G2 that I have. The only difference with that camera is it has autofocus, so I can sort of do that one-handed. Whereas this one, um, I found myself at first trying to bring it up in focus. Um, that was a little difficult, especially holding the phone. So what I started doing as the video went on is I would pre-focus generally about 1.5 meters and wait for someone to get in that zone for me. Or if I wanted something a little bit wider, I would put the camera pre-focus on a point like down that aisle and wait till someone hit that point. So I'm excited to do some more shooting with this. I shot almost a roll on this. And yeah, I'm just excited to uh, see how it turned out. Cool, thanks. My family and I just moved into a new house and what better way to get a lay of the land than take a walk and take some pictures using some color film this time. Um, shooting on Fuji 400H and I've rated it at half box speed. Got my Siconic L358. I'm gonna meter bulb in for the shadows-ish, maybe the mid-tones. Fuji usually does better in a lot of light, but it's kind of like a gray overcast day and I think that might lend itself well for the Fuji tones because um, when you shoot Fuji in not ideal light, which it kind of is right now, you get sort of like a muddy shadows which I think sometimes looks good, so let's check it out. Hey guys, Simon here. I just wanted to give you guys a little final thought on uh, using the X-Pan for a couple weeks. I think that overall my shooting experience with it was, was great. I, had, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, given the current quarantine situation, there weren't too many opportunities to go to locations that I might have preferred to make some cool photographs, but the places that I did go, I think I got some stuff that I, I, uh, I liked. The, uh, the first shoot I did with it in the grocery store. I think that the thing I learned most was that when shooting at that aspect ratio, you need to be a little bit closer than you think you do. Uh, a lot of the photos I got back when I got the scans back, I realized that the subject I was really trying to focus on, while in the viewfinder might appear to be uh, at the correct distance, when looking at them, I wish I had gotten a little bit closer. Even the portrait that I took, which I thought was a, a nice portrait, I wish I had gotten a little bit closer, just to be able to see a little bit more of the emotion, at least in the eyes, you know, with the mask on, it's a little difficult. But the uh, overall, uh, I was, was I was happy with most of the things I got from there. Um, you know, no award-winning photographs are coming from that, but it was, it was fun to use in a street shooting situation. Um, and I used the camera a lot like I would um, my Contax G2, 
in that I set it to for, in this sense, I set it to auto exposure, which the camera did great with, the in-camera meter was excellent, um, and sort of just focused on the fly if I could, or zone focused. I think that the camera handled that really, really well. The, the images that are not so great are completely my fault, uh, no fault of the camera. The second round out, I think I was a little bit more successful uh, with taking my time, metering correctly, composing a shot more so. I know, again, it was a walk around the neighborhood. It wasn't, there's no photos in there that are gonna win any awards. But the thing I, I really thought was interesting was that things that I shot, even at the time that I thought might look a little mundane, look very, very different than I had imagined in that aspect ratio. And I think it gives it um, a little bit of character, even with some of the houses and even, you know, the, the flowers and trees and some of the parking lot stuff. It just gives it a very unique perspective that I think takes an image that may seem mediocre at the time and gives it uh, a little extra character, which I really enjoyed. In summation, you know, I really enjoyed my time with the camera. I'm not sure if it's a camera that would fit into my normal everyday shooting, um, but I'm really happy I got to try it. Uh, it's a fantastic camera, and if you're someone who likes to make panoramic images, uh, it's if you can get your hands on one, absolutely do it. Uh, thank you, Tony, for uh, letting me borrow this for a couple weeks. Thanks for letting me on your channel. Have a good one. <laughs>
So the Leica MP, look how beautiful this thing is. It's just brass and it's just got that patina on it of just like kind of stuff rubbing against it for 50 years or whatever, however old this camera is. And it just looks beautiful. The first time I pulled it out of the box, I was like, holy crap, this thing is so heavy. I had no idea, I had no expectation of how heavy it was gonna be. I think just using it, it feels good. Like everything feels right and it's so simplified that you just don't overthink anything. I've just really enjoyed using this camera and it just makes it really fun shooting. And so, yeah, so I think I have the Leica bug and yeah, it's gonna get expensive, but it's been really fun shooting with this thing. I'm really sad to give it back, but yeah, I'm probably gonna end up getting rid of my Contax G2 and moving on. So if you enjoyed this, please like this video. Big shout out to Simon. Thank you for loaning me this thing and I'm stoked that he liked the X-Pan. I can't wait to see this photos. At the time of making this video, I haven't seen his photos yet, so I'm excited to see the results that he got with the X-Pan. Yeah, just uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and drop a comment below and make sure you follow Simon, so thanks. Bye.